So, we took a little blast to the past recently. Uh, we picked up an OVA called Idia, Zayram the Animation, which they're not going to be able to see that because it's all reflecting. There we go. <laughs> This is a 1996 anime, uh, OVA, it's, uh, six episodes. Yes. Six episodes. And I actually have a history with this series. I checked this anime out of my library when I was probably about 13 years old. No way! Libraries? Yes. I thought they were just for books. Uh, the more exciting part of that is actually that a library had anime 13 years ago. Um, because back then it was actually pretty, pretty, pretty rare. Um, my library had a lot of manga and anime, relatively speaking, because it was in a very, very, very heavily Asian populated area, Saratoga, California. Uh, but anyway, so this was John's first time watching it. Yes. Uh, but perhaps not last. I want to know, uh, why don't you give the, the story summary here, since you're... So this is total 90s sci-fi fun. Things are overly defined. It's it's a pair of bounty hunters that are brother and sister, and they're responding to some call to go rescue some dudes and dudettes on a science vessel. And they get there, and the vessel is being attacked by Zerim, the immortal monster. And it's this dude who invincible. looks like, invincible. He's invincible. And he kind of looks like this wandering, you know, kind of Ronin figure. And uh, and it kind of has this whole alien vibe thing. They decapitate the dude, then he's flying around, it's just his head, and he's murdering everyone. And so, needless to say, shit hits the fan, and uh, Iria finds herself lost. In space. And every single one of the episodes ends up with Zerim trying to find Iria. Yes. So uh, what you've got is kind of, it's, it's very much sort of a space western in terms of what the, the world setting is like, I think. Yes. Um, oh, it is worth noting that Iria is a apprentice bounty hunter at the beginning of the series, which is actually a position of, uh, of, of note within society. They have special rights and privileges for being hunters. Mm -hmm. And it's a big organization, and she eventually promotes, the series shows her evolution essentially as a being as she grows stronger, older, and more confident. So, uh, now that we've talked about what the story's about, why don't we talk a bit about uh, what we thought of the story? Do you want to launch on that, and then I'll... I had nothing the first episode. I'm like, uh, okay, okay, dudes be fighting dudes in space with lasers! In the series' defense, I think John was also playing a game or something at the time. I was uh, working on a website. We watched the whole thing, by the way. This is not a first episode review. Yes. Um, and I, I, I didn't quite get it. I really enjoyed the idea of this unstoppable monster who kept reappearing over and over and over. Well, especially again. with that really cool design. I mean, the, the, John mentioned that he looks kind of like a, a wanderer, which is very much what the, the original creator of Zedem was going for. Because originally, uh, the franchise was built on two live-action movies. This anime functions as sort of a prequel. The live-action movies... Pretty terrible. Meh, from the look of them. Um, but the anime is pretty cool. But, um... I do like the art. I like the world building, and I liked a lot of the facets that... You take each and every episode, it's going to involve Zerum, it's going to involve Iria, and then you just set it in a different location. The second episode takes place on this, like, urchin planet, where when Zerum lands and everyone's like, Holy shit, it's Zerum. They're more than excited just to let him go run amok because he's in the ghetto. He's in the ghetto, and they're like, well, we were going to clean that shit up. Yeah, it's kind of illegal for us to kill small orphans. But you mentioned the art, and I think it's important to note, some of you may find the character designs kind of familiar, and that is because they were drawn by uh, Masakazu Katsura, mm -hmm. uh, who was the mangaka behind Video Girl Eye, DNA mm -hmm. Squared, Shadow Lady, some of the some of the bigger titles in, in the 90s, that is to say. But in I, I've the a lot 90s. Of our, a lot of our younger fans, bro, oh, I don't know anything what we're talking about, but it's okay. Those were good manga, too. Um, I, I really always loved the character design of Idia. I, I liked how they managed to bring it in, like, in the very first episode. Idia 
uh, is, is very much a tomboy. She has short hair, and she has these hair beads. And in the first like couple of minutes, uh, another character says something about how uh, you know women should be wearing makeup and not hair beads. Women should wear makeup, not men's hair beads. So they establish very early on these hair beads are are supposed to be sort of a, a masculine. Uh, piece and it's not like the, the, that doesn't necessarily become a huge plot point or anything like that. But I thought that but it sets that up the little character detail very fast was really very yeah. But I I just I liked the detail. I thought that was just kind of cool. I do enjoy the fact that she's a very strong female protagonist, especially for that time frame that wasn't. I mean, she she's very attractive, but she's not. There were a lot of strong female characters in the nineties. But she's not a she's not necessarily a sexual object. True, true. She's she wears treated. this giant cloak. I mean, you're not. I mean, I guess her underneath the cloak, her outfit kind of emphasizes the boobs a bit. But but it's not revealing or skimpy or anything. But nevertheless, it's not followed by dudes like you're so hot, Iria. I true. want to. Oh, there is that one guy who kind of talks like that. Hey, that's a dirty trick, Iria. Uh, that's is... just the sound of his voice. That's not what he's saying. <laughs> I know, but he sounds like that. I mean, here you go, me, Iria. Um, the other. In Characters that Idia has as her buddies are another bounty hunter. She has uh, the guy who kind of was her brother's boss, I guess you would say. The results speak for themselves, Fujikuro. I match the talent to the job. Before he gets turned into a computer. Kind of cool. And a little kid from that, that first uh, planet that she lands on. Um, so yeah, they're a group kind of, of her people. entourage. And despite the fact that this monster is hypothetically invincible, they never really try to figure out a way to kill it. They just kind of keep attacking it. Well, and spoiler alerts, Idia thinks of a way. I'm not going to tell you whether it was successful or not, and I'm not going to tell you what that way was. But you're right, the governments in these planets are really not very interested in killing Zeta so much as they are interested in just not having Fav- him around here. Okay, biggest complaint, the fact that it's got that really heavy world-building sci-fi thing where they just mention names, they just drop names. It's the Kafugu thing! You're like, oh, the port of Naximus, nah. He's talking about a particular scene where Edia has like a flashback to her childhood learning how to shoot, and the thing that they're shooting is some mysterious trees leaves, and, yeah. and they kind of mention it, and it never pops oh, up. Oh, man, those Kafugu leaves sure are pretty That's durable. That's not actually what they were called. Fugu is, a, is the poisonous uh, pufferfish, I think. Mm-hmm. Anyway. That's not related at all. There's there's no fugu. Yeah. But I do love that the brilliant plan to take care of this unstoppable monster is teleport him away. You're like, don't worry, we've got this under control. Boop. And just shoots him into space. And, and then, then he comes back. That doesn't stop him in the second episode, so they go, don't worry, we've got this under control. Boop. Sends him into space. Episode three, episode four, episode five. Well, part of five. Yeah, eventually you got the government, and and you do have kind of that that three way battle going on where Idia is having to deal with all of the government bullshit, and then there's also Zadam kind of as this third unstoppable party, and so she's kind of fighting a war on two fronts, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I think. Uh, how well do you think the visuals hold up? The visuals still hold up, honestly. I mean, it's got that really '90s feel. Okay, now, Iria, you back me up. It's not gonna feel like the anime you're watching today. But it's so well animated, essentially, mm-hmm. that the strong design, the lots of bits and pieces in it, will keep you engaged, visually yeah. speaking. Yeah, as an OVA, uh, it had a, probably a pretty high budget, and it shows. Uh, I will say, the dub, I liked most of the characters, but Idia's voice, especially in the first couple of episodes, she was played by uh, Stacy Lynn Renna who is best known for voicing the main characters in the hentai anime My 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 and the main character in Jewel Bem Hunter Lime and that's like almost her entire acting career right there uh, and she was kind of obnoxious at first but over time she kind of grew on me didn't bother me and it me didn't much. bother me much in the later episodes but I, I, the, like the first few lines I just were like you get all the prime jobs, don't you, bro? I just wanted to be the dude who got the voice credit for being Zerum the Unstoppable Monster. Um, <laughs> Alright, so overall, what do you think? Would you recommend that our viewers spend some time and money on this? If you could get it for under 20, sure thing. This is a great way to spend an afternoon or two just watching something that you've probably never heard of and never will hear from again. <laughs> I don't know, what if one day they did like a, a remake? That'd be kind of neat. Well, hopefully it. it's not like those terrible, terrible live actions you forwarded me to. Yeah, probably not. 
Yeah. All right. So, and I also would, I, I, I have a serious nostalgia, so I'm a little bit more biased, I think, than John, which is why I was asking him to, to handle the main recommendation. I would recommend checking it out if you have an easy way to, you know, if it's showing at an anime convention near you, if you can check it out from your library, if you can rent it. Uh, they do have it on Netflix, I think. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you've got a good, low-cost way to get at it, I recommend it. Uh, if not, yeah, put it off. You'll get there eventually. 